All right, episode eleven. Yep. Of the uh, right. Fab Kavodcast, <laughs> Commoner Vodcast, the now official Commoner <laughs> format. Um, first episode since then, aside from uh, the announcement one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go over equipment, generic equipment specifically. Well, generic and semi-generic equipment, like the ones that are also like anything that's multi multi-class essentially we're going over equipment today yeah yeah well we're probably not talking about class specific that's the only the only difference but we are talking about like things like shadow equipment that's only used in two classes Mm -hmm. (laughs) but yeah we're looking we're looking at the general equipment the kind of stuff that basically any deck you make you're going to be looking at these these equipment and being like but does this go in right (laughs) So, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to start off with, I guess, just the, the very basic, like, the, the common generics. Um, this is, any everyone has access to these cards. And then we'll go into the more more specialized stuff. So, that'll be uh, part two. And then we'll talk about the rares, which we kind of talked about last episode. But, you know. specific. We? Yes, there was, at least, specifically, there was one rare equipment that we talked a fair bit about. Which was the lantern. Right, of course. And we may kind of rehash some of that in this one, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So, yeah, I guess we uh, start with the generic equipment. And normally I would just go down this list and go in, in like, uh, you know, alphabetical order or whatever order this is in. But I think probably the best place to start is with the most basic equipment. (laughs) All right, so... Most basic equipment, starting with the most basic of equipment, um, this is the easiest one to talk about. No rune. Of course. Every single deck is having this in the sideboard because, mm-hmm. A, the sideboard is only equipment, so why not? Uh, you can't put cards in there <laughs> that are going to go into the main board. So if you're going to have sideboard equipment, no rune is it's the best way to deal with arcane damage. Right. And typically you only need one. However, there are situations where you you would need two. You, you probably don't need any more than that, though. Maybe. So usually you have room for more than that. Um, right. Or I would say usually we have, on average, three sources of Arcane Barrier between, like, two Null Rune and then, like, a class equipment. Right. Usually. That's not always the case. But generally speaking, you're around three. And the only reason for that is if you run into a wizard. That is where you want all the Arcane Barrier. Right. Um... Which, it's not super, super strong in commoner, I don't think. But we are just about to get more wizard cards. That and that true. may change things. Well, are we? Are we? Uh, we well, don't know that. <laughs> we don't know that. That is true. We, we do know that Uprising will have a wizard, it's a ninja, be... and an illusionist in it. Those are the three classes. Yep, so. they're all going to be legendary. But for all we know, it could be all Frost Wizard cards. Right. And then, <laughs> But I mean... You still might want Arcane Barrier for Frost Wizard. Nobody knows. Um, presumably, a Frost Wizard is still going to be running Voltic Bolt. And Voltic Bolt is one of the biggest arguments for having as much Arcane Barrier as possible since it's going to do like 4 to 5 damage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but generally speaking, outside of Wizard, yes, you only need like 1 to 2 sources of Arcane Barrier because it's really just Rune Blade that's right. going to be... Runeblade and some very fringe cards in a couple of other classes. I say a couple of other classes. It may actually just be one class. Wait, no. No. Uh, the New Ranger. Does that have arcane damage in it? No, Lexi? No, that's like no, non-specified, right? Yeah, it's non-specified. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> but but uh, Prism does. Prism has one card in Commoner that will deal one point of arcane. Right. <laughs> So you, you only need to bring one yeah. null rune piece. Yep, and the and the big reason too is like rune chance. Mm-hmm. One one piece of arcane barrier affects all of the rune chance coming at you. Yep, <laughs> they are all individual sources of arcane damage. Rosetta Thorn. Yep, you need two pieces to block. Yep, all of it, anyways. Yep, because yep. that one is one source dealing two. Yep, so. Yeah, no rune. It's just you're going to put some number of these in the sideboard, and it's going to be based on how many slots you have available and what your class equipment does. If you are one of those unfortunate classes that do not have any arcane barrier on their class equipment, I think Warrior is one of those. 
Or you have the, um, uh, what, what's the other not arcane barrier? I uh, guess we'll talk about that Are later. you talking about Spell Void? Yeah. Um, yeah, but, well, I mean, I guess the only, there, that really only applies to a couple of classes, and uh, a chain runs Crown of Dictomy exactly for that reason. True. Like he has in the sideboard to get around, to, to replace the Spell Fray one, so, mm-hmm. or Spell Void, it's not Spell Fray, but. But yeah, it's it's basically you're you're going to want at minimum one piece of Nolan in your sideboard. Yep. Because even if you have class equipment, you still want one to go with it, just in case you hit like the wizard. So yeah, basically what no rune you bring in is what or how many slots you have available. If you're a warrior with like two Centauri swords and stuff like that, then things get a little more tricky. But of course, still uh, yeah, you're just be- you're just better off with uh, some amount of Nolan rune. And then we get into this uh, competition of <laughs> Iron Hide versus Iron Rot. Yeah. So neither of these are good or, mm. or great, I should say. Neither of them are great. Um, and in fact, it, it, I just grabbed the first item that was on the list for each of them, but it's actually the most appropriate I could have grabbed with the helm because that is, generally speaking, the easiest slot to replace with whoever you are playing in Commoner. Okay. With the exception of being like Archer. Archer has the hood. Yep. But generally speaking, like 90% of your commoner decks are running some variety of Hope Merchant's Hood, uh, Talismanic Lens, or... Um, a class-specific. Ragamuffin's Hat. Oh, that too. Yeah. So, like, those hats are so easy to replace with something like this if you're yeah. facing a deck that's more aggressive. It is a little bit trickier with things that have, like, Ebb and Fold or class-specific ones. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. But generally speaking... That's what Iron Hide or Iron Rot is for. It's for having something for if the other deck is faster than you. Yep. Or if they hit harder. Yeah, true. <laughs> true. Um, and basically the argument that comes down to this, you and I use an excessive amount of Iron Hide rather than Iron Rot. I don't know that any of us are using Iron Rot. No, I, I typically stay away from it. In and... fact... <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because, you know... Iron Rot breaks. Yes. Well, they do both kind of break, but yeah. That's but this true. does block more before it breaks. Um, in fact, there was one. There was one deck where I was finally going to use Iron Rot, and it would have been the boots. And then I just realized that Runaways are just better yep. than the boots. <laughs> it was. It was old him. Old him was going to have Iron Rot boots, and then I just realized Runaways was better. And that was only because he had the shield. So I think, if I remember correctly, it was like you have the shield, and then there might be like a class equipment that blocks for for one too, so, something like that, or it was like maybe the, it was it was something because it was like between the shield that and if I put one iron rot, that would block for three, which was a pretty critical block amount. That is. So it yeah. was like okay, iron iron rot works here because it gets the other things up to the point that they make a difference. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But Runaways was just better. It just happened to be the boot slot that was the most replaceable because he has time skippers and time skippers is very replaceable. And so uh, even then, I didn't go Iron Rot. But the big upside Iron Rot, you don't have to pay anything. It's just blocks. You just throw it in front of something, it blocks one damage, and then it's gone. Yep. Uh, Iron High blocks for more. Blocks for two, which is really nice. Unless you're being hit for one, and then it's... Not, well, that's true. It's a then, little bit overkill. A waste. But I mean, yeah, like, it's it is and not overkill. It is technically worse in that situation because yeah. you had to pay for it. But there's a couple of places where Iron Hide is very much better than Iron Rot. Mm-hmm. One of which is more of the death blow for Iron Rot for me. <clears throat> but first off, some decks, specifically Ranger and Mechanologist, come to mind really care about not running out of cards right and so iron hide is nice in the sense that well while well, iron rot wouldn't absorb anything either or like wouldn't wouldn't use cards either iron hide blocks for more and so it allows you to kind of be defensive with a mechanologist deck or a or a ranger deck and not lose cards because right. you're pitching them and they're going back into your deck but you're still blocking for almost as much as if you blocked with the card so 
I love it in like Dash, where I I need to be the kind of more control aspect deck because I can be heavily defensive without losing cards. And then the bigger thing is it's really good against Warrior because you can throw your Ironhide in front of their attack mm -hmm. and you don't have to do anything with it. So it's like it's it's basically insurance. Is that if they spend the pump spell, you can then pay for Ironhide to block that extra amount. And if they don't spend the pump spell, you don't pay for Ironhide and you don't lose Ironhide. It only breaks if you pay for it. Mm -hmm. So it's very nice in like matchups like that and any other ones that may come along where you have to worry about them pumping the attack. So Ninja's kind of similar. Where you can just kind of throw this in front and just be like, well, I'll pay for it if I have to. And otherwise... So and, and it really kind of sucks for the warrior player because the warrior player now has to use that pump spell to make you break your iron hide, or else you're just going to continue doing it every turn. But then they're effectively wasting that pump spell. <laughs> so iron hide is also really good into those specific matchups, and having those swingy matchups where it's really good is probably enough to make it just better than iron rot. Mm -hmm. But yeah. So those are the big generic ones. These are your filler equipment that, like, we've... Essentially. I think every deck we've ever made has had some number of Null Rune and Ironhide in the sideboard. Yeah, so you'd <laughs> most likely have it for your Warriors and your... Yep. yep. Going against Brutes or... Yep. Just to mitigate some of the damage. And, and again, it's because, like, a, a, almost every class has some sort of flex spot where they're like, there's an item in this spot, and it really doesn't do a lot for the deck. Like, specifically, the warrior. to use the warrior example again, like, you're using Hope Merchant's Hood because, well, you have to have some sort of hat. So, like, you're not going to go no hat slot for no reason and just mm -hmm. lose the utility. So you have this card that can give you redraws, but you don't really care about that. Like, it can be really good for you, but you also really don't care. So you can easily throw in Ironhide or Null Rune depending on right. what you're going up against. So unlike Null Rune... This is an absolutely necessary yeah. to have in your Yeah, your that's side. true. If you somehow can't afford a full sideboard for your deck, you can easily cut the iron hides and have your deck do what it needs to do. Yep. <laughs> you will be much more efficient at doing what your deck wants to do and just slightly less good at dealing with aggro decks. <laughs> mm -hmm. But yeah, this is definitely iron hide, iron rot is the most minimal thing and certainly too if you, if you have like a bunch of iron rot and you have no iron hide cards because you bought like a ton of welcome to wrath boxes or something like that it's not going to hurt you that much to put iron rot in right it's just i think i think the the added benefit against warrior is just enough to push iron hide to the point where you really should use it <laughs> but yeah so those are the big generics um like the the big the big filler generics and the rest of them are all much more specialized uses so i guess starting with uh the first the first uh yeah i guess now we just go down the list but talismanic lens this is one of those those uh utility hats that i just mentioned um <clears throat> probably the weakest right because it just opts yep and there's not a lot of decks that care about opting Right. Like, it's it's not a bad thing for any deck. Like, any deck is fine with being able to, like, oh, look at the top cards, make sure I'm drawn well. If There there are decks that would need it, but there are other <laughs> cards that you would use in place of that. Well, it, for, for the most part, there are very narrow decks, or one specifically, that loves this card, and this is, like, an auto-include, and ironically is not the easiest card to replace in that deck, because I would actually keep this over their class chess piece, and that is the one in the sidebar, currently, where there's two Cano Commoner decks listed on the side there. Uh, yep. <laughs> My Cano non-commoner foiled out full, full price, like, or not, it's not a full deck because you would replace this ultimately, but my, my Blitz Cano deck that is for the competitive format has Talismanic Lens in the hat spot because A, I don't have Arcanite Skullcap, but... Of course. It's actually really, really good in the deck, and there's no other hat that does what it does, essentially. So, for a deck like Kano, where you're playing cards off the top of your deck, opting is good. For other de like other decks, you'd rather just take your bad cards and cycle them into your deck and draw new cards than look at what you'll be getting next turn. So, if there was a hat that did that, that we're getting to later, that hat would usually be better than this. But, this is great in Kano. And it's also something you could consider in Azalea. 
Except for the fact that Honing Hood is probably just better. Yeah. <laughs> Even though Azalea does care about the top of the deck. The hood does so much. But yeah, that's Talismanic Lens. Ooh, best of the first fist. This is this is an interesting one because I think this is actually like a chess piece that I underrate. I think I don't use this as much as I should. Funny enough. Ironically, because of the sideboard, again, is that I actually think that it may be better in Dash, and I should actually be running it over uh, Hardened Cross Traps. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure. I, I go back and forth on that. Right. So the the real difference is that this has to hit, or something has to hit for this to yes. go off, right? But it does it at effectively instant speed. So right. it doesn't end the chain. Right. <clears throat> so this is an auto include a ninja. Because Ninja really cares about the chain. Mm -hmm. Dash also cares about the chain. The difference is Ninja has a lot of cheap things. Whereas Dash has a lot of expensive things. Right. <clears throat> and sometimes you're starting your chain with those expensive things. So it's a little bit more questionable with her. But like Ninja, this is just, this is a no brainer. And basically if you're building any other deck that really cares about the chain. And you don't have a class chess piece. This is the one to look at. I don't think we put it in ranger but <clears throat> i don't remember i forget is blood drop brocade an instant or an action because <laughs> that would be the other question i think it was an action <clears throat> okay although the ranger isn't necessarily a huge chain based thing because there's like you set up that one really good chain and then you never do it again <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah so this is just this is a really good chess piece for the chain specific things where you're just chaining together a bunch of stuff because it doesn't end the chain but it still gives you two resources which is awesome and it lets you spend them wherever you want so you can spend one on one attack and then one on the next attack or right. like a pump spell unlike some of the other slots for this but really really good one and maybe that's what we really should be doing is actually going by you know what all right mid video mid video change here if i can Actually, I'm just, I'm just going to scroll down to the right things. Let's just do the hats first, and then all the chess pieces. I see. Because that's probably the better way to do this. <clears throat> I know I've already started here, but, you know. In fact, it probably is better to start with Hope Merchants than Ragamuffins, because I think Hope Merchants is the more generic one. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so Hope Merchants Hood, instant, destroy it, shuffle any number of cards from your hand in your deck, and then draw that many cards. Uh Made notorious by a certain Katsu vs. Hiram yep. <laughs> game on mm -hmm. this channel. <laughs> well, I, that game half of, half of that was my fault. Anyway. I mean, that's true. But literally, that game single handedly changed my entire evaluation of this card. Mm -hmm. I, there's so many like decks I threw this in that I was just like, oh, whatever. And then anytime we played a game, I sideboarded it out and I never kept it in. And now there are games where I'm like, yeah, but I don't really need the Iron Hide. I'm just going to keep the Hope Merchants in. <laughs> it's, 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 it's really good. It's, it's very basic, but it's really good. It what? might not do anything, or it might do something. Yeah, yeah. And, and generally speaking, if you're ever in the position you're cracking Hope Merchants Hood, you're kind of already at the worst case scenario. So the chances are, you're like, your hand's not going to get worse. It might not get better, but it, it probably won't get worse. Because you'll probably keep whatever like makes the hand work like you'll keep the blue and cycle the other three cards mm -hmm. so like you'll be able to do something with it and it, it probably won't be worse unless you have like two defense reactions in your deck and you're not they're not in your hand and then you draw both of them and you're like okay now i literally do nothing but <laughs> yeah this is just a good generic cat slot if you don't have a class or other better hat slot oat merchants just make your hand better sweet Mm -hmm. and does that instant speed too so it, it, you can still use that in any of the chain specific of ones course. nobody cares it all works doesn't break the chain which is actually true of the next one too this is the more specialized one which uh i think you are the only one that has a deck that uses this currently i think so because what because i think it, it's dated all dated all uh, dated yes. all it makes sense for mm -hmm. um yeah. Poor Dana Doll. That deck is broken now. <laughs> deck is very bad now. Uh, and it's not getting any better, too, because nope. Mechanologist isn't in the next set. Nah, how about... <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll put the cards in anyways. You yeah. yeah, maybe. They'll do more generic mm -hmm. items that you can't use. 
or you can't get for free. <laughs> because that would be too broken for Data Doll if she got all of those bad generic items for free. Of course. <laughs> Uh, but what Ragamuffin's hat does is similar to Hope Merchant's Hood, except you can only do it when you have one card in hand. Yep. And it only gives you one card. And what it basically does is you just destroy it, draw a card, and then you put a card from your hand on the top or bottom of your deck. So this does do a couple of neat things. One, you can always put a card to the bottom, which is kind of nice. Mm -hmm. So you're like, okay... You know, I, I don't want this card at all. This is terrible. Well, you, you won't see it for a while again. Yeah. <laughs> and then the other benefit over Hope Merchants is you get to see what you're going to draw and then decide if you want it or if you'd prefer to just keep what you had. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one nice thing, too, is that unlike Hope Merchants, where it's like it's almost always going to give you a, an as good or better hand, there is still the slight possibility it gives you a worse hand. And this does not have that problem. It mm -hmm. will not give you a worse hand. And it does have one other big thing, and that was why it went into data at all. And that's that you can put stuff bar. on top. No, <laughs> well, that's true too. But because you can put something on top of the deck, and she cares about the top of the deck. Right. And specifically, too, she wants to have an item on the top of your deck. So this is a great way, if you draw all items and you're stuck with this terrible hand, you can get those items out of your hand and back where you want them to be yep. <laughs> on top of the deck. So really, really, it, it's the best in slot for Data Doll. The only problem is the only other deck that really cares about what's on top of the deck is Kano. And Kano would prefer to have Lens than Ragmuffins. Well, there, there's also Blood Debt. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, Chain could do it, but Chain has uh, options. Well, many I was, options. I was actually thinking of Levia. Oh, Levia. Okay. What What does she use for her? Uh, same thing Chain does, probably. Right. That's because true. it is. Yeah, it, Yeah, it's yep. still it's still uh it's still better for her too. <laughs> oh, <well. laughs> yeah, I yeah. Mean, the problem is the people who would use it have better. <laughs> if you somehow don't have an Ebon Fold, but you yeah. do have a Cold Foil Ragamuffin. <laughs> Not well, swell. don't worry. You have a data doll deck, so the cold foil ragamuffins found a home. That's true. And also, too, it's a broken home. But if, it's a home. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so actually, this is very true. <laughs> but uh, we have to fix that deck too because we have to take out the rares. Yep. Uh, uh. We get a shotgun now, at least. Do I even want it? No, but I mean, why not have it? <laughs> I mean, I guess I could have it in the sideboard. Yeah, exactly. Okay, check, check this out. Yeah, check this Just out. Just to protect my broken home. Yeah, it's actually it's actually terrible in your deck because she, she has the shorter chain too mm -hmm. because of the less cards. But one what, what other thing with Rag Buffets too is if you started playing the game more recently, you don't want to shell out the ridiculous like 15 cents for a Hope Merchant's Hood, but you have a pile of Ragamuffins hats, you really can throw Ragamuffins into any deck that would run Hope Merchant's Hood. It's yep. just Hope Merchant's Hood is that small margin better. Yeah. Because you can also get more cards and you don't have to get down to one card. Which that's that's the big problem with Ragamuffin to me, is that you have to have exactly one card to use. Yeah. It. And like Data Doll. She's the most likely to get away with that because she doesn't have any cards in her hand to begin with. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so getting down to one, not that bad. But like, there are certain decks where it's like, okay, but I can't get down to one, <laughs> or if I do, then the hand's going to be unsalvageable anyways. You have like the two cards in hand, and you're like, well, I have to pitch one to play the other. So then, like, I can't just pitch this one and have it sitting there. You have to spend it on something. So it's like, yeah, it's it, it can be hard to crack Ragamuffin's hood. Or hat sometimes. So that's the biggest downside over using it over Hope Merchant. I think I've done it. Yeah. I don't remember what. You definitely used it in the deck and, and actually cracked it. Don't tell me it was in Katsu. It, I think it was. <laughs> actually, you know what? I, I think it was. Because I don't... I don't think you haven't played Data Doll yet. No. And also, I don't think I cracked it in that entire game that we did play of Data Doll. <laughs> And I don't think I could... I, I think I actually had problems getting down to the point that I could crack it And at one point. I don't remember why I cracked it or why it was even in the deck. I think that, I, was, that was pre... It was pre-dated all, and you had a cold foil rag muffins. Yeah. I think that's the reason it ended probably. up in Katsu. It, it, that's probably... I think, exactly I think that's the, the reason. reason. <laughs> yep, yep. Because I just got it. And it was like, <laughs> check this out. Put this in my deck right now. <laughs> 
Yeah, that is all of the uh, the like completely generic uh, hats. We did mention Ebon Fold, and there is there is Halo as well, and um, there's Plume, which we'll get we'll get to that later. That's one of the multi class where it's like it's not available to everyone, but it is available to more than one class. Right. <clears throat> so then, going on to chess pieces, we'll start with the worst one. Um, I think some people love this card though, so I might get shot for that. But deep blue. Yeah, um, I hate this card. I'm going to be honest. I hate this card. I hate what it does. Um, <laughs> it gives you a ton of resources. That's the one nice thing. Three resources is an incredible amount. But right. you have to lose a card to do it. See, this would be okay in a deck where, mm -hmm. actually, yeah, I guess it would be like if you're running mostly red cards. Okay. But you still have some expensive stuff. Yeah. Okay. So okay. You, you'd, so yeah, like, a like pitching a red like a brew. card to get a blue a value. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess I guess brute like that kind. That's a great one to say because right. like brute does want to run a bunch of red and yellow cards because they don't want to go below six power, right. <laughs> and those are all expensive attacks. They're all like two to three costs mm -hmm. usually. There are some one costs now, especially after Everfest. But um, actually, no. A lot of the Everfest ones are two costs. I think. But yeah, that's that's a good that's a good example. That actually that actually kind of makes me think about this more and be like, oh, should we be thinking about this? Should we be considering this more for brute? That probably is the best home for it, because brute you're probably not going to use all the cards in your hand because right. you don't have a lot of sources of go again per se. The problem is it does have a lot of discard. Yeah, that's true. And, and that's the big problem with deep blues. Deep blue gives you a ton of resources, which is really nice, but you now have less things to spend it on. Which is the balance, the balance with it, but like most of the decks I would think to put this in are ones that like are super resource heavy, and for those decks, they usually want a ton of resources so that they can do more than one thing. Mm -hmm. And if they're losing a card to gain those resources, then they're losing the other thing they could be doing. Right. <laughs> usually, so that's why I'm always super critical on Deep Blue, but. But you have made me think now that there might actually be a good way to build that in a group. If, if you don't go too heavy on, like, the just flat discard ones. Because, like, Deep Blue would work fine with the ones that, like, draw discard. Right. So as long as you don't have too many of, like, the generic ones that are, like, discard a card, where you just lose something. I, I think I try to stay away from those. I go for more of the, well, the draw one, discard the or the... A, a few, though. Yeah, They're just so good. No, there are They're so though. good. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, the... We were trying to aim for the, the, the draw discard, I feel like. We still have to fix Levia, don't we? Uh, Probably. Yeah. Yep. That's that's a shame. She was finally getting into a good spot. <laughs> but yeah, so Deep Blue, best place, something like that, where so, it's like lots of red cards, they're expensive. Maybe this will go into the Levia deck, who knows? I don't, I don't even remember what the chess piece is for her. Yeah. You know... I do feel a little bit better about Deep Blue now. You you phrase that in the perfect way. You're welcome. Well, because I always think of it like you gain three resources and you lose something. But you're right. You're basically like, oh, I have all red cards in hand, but I need a blue to pitch. You're just turning your pitched card into three resources. Now. Exactly. So yeah, that's that's not too bad. That that's that's a lot better when you think of it that way. Um, I still I still wouldn't necessarily say I'm a huge fan of it, but no, it, it's very niche. And I, w I wouldn't put it in Dash, which Dash my baby, so that's like... <laughs> I wouldn't put it into her because there is actually a non-zero uh, number of times in which all five cards are going to be played this turn. <laughs> Where I'm going to play four cards from hand and one from Arsenal and <laughs> be able to pay for it all. <laughs> but, yeah, I... I all right, I'm, I'm coming around a little bit to Deep Blue. I, I, I think we could find some decks where this would actually be good in it. Namely Brute decks. <laughs> mm. Um, I don't... Oh. Maybe Viscerai. Actually, Brute... Brute is a funny one, isn't it? Yeah. Where we have, I think, Heart and Cross Straps. And Brute actually yeah, has a class chess piece. And we were choosing <laughs> generic over the class chess piece. Which one is that? That's like Oh, the... Barkbone Strapping. Yeah. But we I had it in the sideboard because it had Battle Worn. Right. But, but like, we had a generic over it for the main slot. So, I mean, maybe. Maybe Deep Blue, Deep Blue can find a home there. Now I'm thinking about it that way. Because you do, you pitch something for, even even if you use Hardened Cross Straps, you're still usually 
pitching something too. Mm. Yeah, maybe, maybe. I have to think about this. I have a pile of these from my Tales of Aria boxes. I have so many, so I certainly... <laughs> and think about it this way. You yeah. can pitch a red to play a slogism. Is that why you said viscera? You're trying to appeal to my slogism. Uh -huh. <laughs> I see. I see where we're going here. Uh, Speaking of heart and cross. Oh, yeah. But you probably want to put it in the viscera because it's got a class. It's got a class chess piece. Oh, does it? Yeah, Runeblade has a class chess piece, and it's actually one of the best class pieces out there because it's Aether Iron Weave. Right. <laughs> <Yeah. Of course. laughs> Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those rare things where it blocks and also does something really, really good. Yep. Like the warrior equipment. <laughs> um, Blood Drop Brocade would be next on the list, but I think it's probably the most appropriate to go from Deep Blue to Heart and Cross Traps yeah. because this is the one we kept debating about. Mm -hmm. um, I love Heart and Cross Traps. This is probably the opposite of Deep Blue. I probably overrate Heart and Cross Traps. Um, this goes into so many decks for me. This is in my Illusionist deck. This is in my Dash deck. Um... And I talk about Dash, like, I, I flip-flop between whether I should have Vest of the First Fist or this. It's like, this, I can't use this in the middle of my chain with Dash. Right. That because that will totally ruin it. breaks things. the chain because it's an action. Yep. But she has a lot of two-cost attacks that I can start the chain with right. that you I can would... go cross-strap that. Yeah, you could start the chain with it. And that's what the problem with Vest of the First Fist actually is, is that I have a lot of expensive attacks. So I can't crack vest ahead of time. So I have to pitch something to start my chain. Yeah. And then if you full block it, oh, it's a nightmare scenario. <laughs> if I can't hit you, then I can't even crack the vest and the whole thing falls apart. Yep. <laughs> the wheels fall off the wagon quick. So I think that's why I've stuck with heart and cross straps with dash is that it's, it's actually pretty easy to play around the negatives for it. Mm -hmm. And then this is just a good one to throw into a lot of decks because a lot of decks have two costs or more attacks. If you play Illusionist, a lot of your attacks are two cost. Um, there are some one cost. Illusionist is actually where that could hurt the most, where unlike Vest or Deep Blue, this doesn't give you resources. It makes your next thing cost less. Right. Which means so if you play a one cost, yeah. You're wasting one resource, yes. essentially. Whereas Vest would allow you to put one here, one there, etc. So Same with Deep Blue. Yep. Was that an instant? Uh, uh, Deep Blue is an action with Go Again. Yes, action Ooh, with Go Again. Okay, so that's another demerit for Deep Blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't fit into like the chain specific ones. But the one thing with that is you can always start your chain with that. Unlike this, right. where or well, this you usually can, but not always. And this you always can't start your chain with it. <laughs> so yeah, um, Hard and Cross Traps is just a great generic one. If you're like, I have a chess slot open, I don't know what to throw in here, you can usually throw cross traps in without too much difficulty, provided you're not like a super one cost or lower tribal deck like Briar. Or Katsu. <laughs> or Katsu, or Ira, mm -hmm. or Benji, or um, Chain, kind of. Chain doesn't play a lot of things there, yep. two or more. Um, Unless you're going Aura Chain, which I don't know why you would. <laughs> but I mean, it's possible. That's true. That's true. Um, I feel like there's another one. Oh, Bolton probably wouldn't necessarily want this. I think Bolton has a lot of one costs. Um, Kasai. Uh, actually, none of the warriors will want this. This does only reduce the cost of attack action cards. Right. Probably worth mentioning that. Um, uh, <laughs> now that I think about that, is that yes, there are so. Things that aren't going to play attack action cards do not want this. Wizard does not want this. Warrior does not want this. Right. Um, so you have to be using attack action cards to actually consider this for your deck. But if you are, and you have plenty that are two costs or more, this is just a great generic. Um, but if you're not, but you're still going to be attacking and dealing physical damage, so not wizard, you have Blood Drop Brocade, which that is an instant. So, good to know. Good to know. Uh, there was something we were talking about where the chain might have mattered, and that would be good for it. Ranger. Ranger, that was the one. Ranger would prefer this over the... Um, or might, might prefer this over um, some of the other things. I was trying to think what we were, what we were discussing with that. 
but I think this might be in our Rangers deck. This is definitely in our Warriors deck. Both of our both Dorinthi and Kasai are running Blood Drop Brocade. You could technically play this in a Blood Debt deck. You could. But that's only if you're <laughs> looking to get hit by Blood Debt. And, and it wouldn't necessarily... Uh... Oh yeah, that's... Wait, does that count as physical damage? I don't think that counts as physical damage. I feel like it should. And also, also that happens at the end of the turn. So then you wouldn't be able to use this. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Wait, no, I thought it's at the beginning of the turn. But that said, do you actually could argue for considering this for like a chain or a viscerai only because it requires slightly less to crack it than an Aether Iron Weave per mm -hmm. se? Um, this has to hit, whereas Aether Iron Weave, you have to cast two different things. <laughs> um, but. This is really good in Warrior, especially. Warrior is one of the best places to use Blood Drop Brocade because all you have to do is deal physical damage, which all the weapons do, and then you can crack this for one resource, which is, generally speaking, all you need to swing with a weapon again. <laughs> I say generally speaking. That's actually 100% accurate. Every single Warrior weapon swings for one. Every single one of them. Dawnblade is one. Centauri Saber is this one. The okay. Axes are one. Hmm. All of them are one. I thought there was one that was two. If it is, it's above, like, it's, it's, it's rare or higher. higher. Okay. Although, I'm not 100% sure, because I think Bolton's Majestic swings for zero. I think it costs zero, but it's, like, it also has zero power. I think you have to, like, charge your soul, and then it gains uh, power equal right. to that. Something I, like that. I think you might be right. But I think it I costs think zero to that. attack or something like that. It's one. It, it, it's, it's not more than one. That's for sure. It's too rich for our blood. Yeah, true. Facts. <laughs> Um, and that, I don't think there was any other ones that were printed, unless there was something printed in, like, Everfest that I'm forgetting about that also would be a bubble rare. But, yeah, that's, that's the big thing where Blood Drop Brocade is really good, is that Warrior, one, this just gives you resources, so it doesn't have the attack action requirement, um, and one resource, Warrior can do a lot with that. Yeah, you could put this in a ninja deck. You could, you could. Which I, I did. You look at the sideboard or sidebar. Yeah, I was right. just about to mention that because I looked at the sidebar. I'm like, yep. I'm like, oh look at that, Kasai Commoner, Kasai Commoner. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep, warrior decks. And I was like, oh, Ira. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I think you still would run Fest of the First Fist though. I don't, I don't yeah. know why you'd run Blood Drop Rocket over that, because I mean. It's just it's just more resources. More resource. <laughs> just it has the same requirements. Um, so why wouldn't you run it in a warrior deck? Uh, I don't know. I guess you could run best of the first fist in the warrior deck too. Could you put this in a wizard deck? No. No. Because you don't do physical damage. That's true. And also, if you're a wizard, you can't do anything with one resource. <laughs> but if you've been dealt physical damage. Uh, you, you could can... use it on their turn. That's true. Yes. That's true. That's, That's true. Okay, I see where you're going with yeah. this. Um, generally speaking, I think you would be better off with... I'm trying to think what chess piece I even use. I, I know you... That's the question. I know you would. I'm just saying you can use it for that purpose. No, <laughs> you're, you're backpedaling right now, but what's actually happening is that I'm starting to really question my own decisions in life and i'm trying to figure out if you're actually just right <laughs> <laughs> like i'm actually thinking here i'm like wait a, minute, wait a minute what chess piece do i use like i know the wizard chess piece is there but it's i think it often gets sideboarded i think it's like the first piece of equipment i sideboard in it because it's kind of bad like it's an action and it gives you three resources it does not have go again mm. which means Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's troublesome to use because you basically are only going to crack that if you're just like, all right, it's my turn, but I'm just going to play off the top of my deck instead right. of out of hand. So, or you have lead the charge. So maybe you have something uh, to add to your wizard sideboard now. But that's what are what are this is actually this is actually better. It's, it's like a it's like a weird findle spring tunic. <laughs> Because that's what Findles does. It just gains counters, and then you remove it for one resource. And that's not a lot, but it... it... <laughs> I'm going to have to try that. <laughs> I never thought about using it for a, but I'll get hit, and then I can use it. Exactly. <laughs> but, but you're right, that's actually so good in Wizard. 
Oh, I, I, but I'm also I'm also trying to think like now too is like actually is it just better to go like deep blue for wizard then like that that might be the argument probably. And I think I think the robes has uh, arcane barrier, so I think that might be one of the big reasons you would use the robe. Like I think it may actually be sideboard in my in my cano deck because I'm just like well if I run into another wizard I bring in the robes. I think competitive blitz has it in the sideboard for the same exact reason. You just bring it in against the other wizard. <laughs> um, yeah, I might have to <laughs> to try that. I might have to mess around with that. I didn't think about that. My cano deck might be able to get upgraded with deep blue or blood drought. Hmm. You may have you may have hurt yourself here. <laughs> you're you're making my wizard deck better. <laughs> I'm only trying to even the playing field. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, kind of a far cry from a uh, competitive blitz with uh, with where the wizard is at in Commoner. This is oh, where we start gloves. to get yeah. This is where we start getting into the interesting stuff. Is is gloves and gloves and boots? That's the the real. The real cool stuff, because like the hats, with the exception of uh, of Kano, there's no hat that I was like, this is critical for this deck, except kind of ragamuffins with Data Doll, kind of. Right. But even then, it's not like really, really critical. It's only because um, Data Doll sucks. Yeah. <laughs> because you could draw all items and have a, a hand that blocks for nothing, and you may just have to cycle it to block and not die. Yep. <laughs> As I was considering in the game against you with it. Um. And then the chess pieces are all giving you resources mm -hmm. through some means, every single one of them. This is where we start getting into unique effects, is the gloves and the boots. Those are the things that start doing things where you're like, okay, I can't replace this. This is, this is irreplaceable in the deck. Um, this is a terrible first card to look at for discussing that, because this is the most <laughs> replaceable card. The only, actually, you know what, let's start here. This is the worst card. <laughs> this is the worst gloves. They're the worst gloves. Cracker Jacks. Cracker Jacks. So, you know, it'd be really tragic if you pulled a cold foil one out of the box. Not that anyone's done that. Mm. But this is... The <laughs> Who would have ever had that as, as Someone's over here lamenting their cold foil ragamuffins while they have a data doll deck in which it's actually kind of good and mm. the deck's just bad. Yep. I'm over here with my cold foil Cracker Jacks with the... I can't play this. It's awful in every deck. <laughs> Didn't you get two? I, I don't think I might. I think I might have two. <laughs> and they're bad. And they're bad. They're just bad. The, it, it, every deck you can build has a glove that does more than Greg or Jack. Yeah. Every deck. It, it All it does is it gives you one more attack. Which, which I mean... On your next attack action card. Yes. Which is pretty much the same for all the gloves, and that's why the warrior gloves are so good, because they're the only gloves that affect weapon attacks, um, whereas and, these are all attack action cards, but yeah. Yeah, and this is an action in itself. With, yep. with no, uh, it does have go again, okay. Yeah, it but, does have go again. But still, you have yeah. to show your hand before... All, all it's doing is boosting it by one. Yep. And everything else has the potential to do more. Literally all of the other three gloves can do more than this. And even one of the non non generic ones, the multi class ones, that glove can do this much or more. <laughs> right. If this was an attack reaction instead. Yes. Yes. Then then it would be an argument. Mm. Yep. Yep. That's that is hundred percent fair. That would make Cracker Jacks great again. Make it an attack reaction. <laughs> that would actually be that that would be the best way you could ever possibly make this or improve this card. Because it's balanced it only gives plus one mm -hmm. so it'd be a weaker effect than all the other gloves with the plus side of being able to use that as an attack reaction lss should pay us yes we just, they should. We just fixed fixed their garbage card bracers of belief the next most garbage card. <laughs> but but i used to look at this card think it was terrible and then we built briar and briar does very dirty things off of having low pitch on the top of their deck mm-hmm it just so happens that Briar has better cards. Um, <laughs> but actually, like, realistically speaking, this is one of the cards that you could put... Like, if you take Mark out of Briar, this is one of the cards you possibly put in. Funny enough. Um, it's an argument between this and Stubby Hammers. Um, only because Stubby Hammers is bad in Briar, but it becomes better if Ball Lightning gets banned. <laughs> and you have to start using more bad cards you could 
You could combo this with uh Ragamuffins? No, not Ragamuffins. <laughs> I thought that's what you were no, going no, to. No. <laughs> I'm going to build Briar Cavdane, and I'm just going to Ragamuffin's Bracers of Belief to make my Ravenous Rabbles better. <laughs> yes, Ravenous Rabbles, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's why I'm saying Briar's like the only home for this. Yeah. You you could put it in Briar, it would not be awful in Briar, um, it would not be amazing, but like, generally speaking in Briar, this is going to give you plus two. It will occasionally give you plus one, and it will very occasionally give you plus zero. Yep. Which is the big downside, is that this would be a much better card if it was X is th uh, 4 minus the pitch value. Because then you could do anything between 1 to 3. Yep. In commoner, anyways. Technically, in other formats, you could have plus 4. But that's pretty rare. Even more rare is getting 3 minus 0. True. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. There's Gargonian Tome and things like that outside yep. of commoner. But in commoner, this could only do... Plus plus zero to plus two. I think there's something in commoner. Is there something? I just don't remember what it is. Are you allowed to put cracked bobbles? No, cracked bobbles have fish. That's that's the one thing they do have. Yeah. Um, I could be wrong. I could be absolutely wrong. I don't know. Suppose I could look that up. You could. I'm just. I'm not even gonna put common here. I'm just gonna go by pitch cost of. I can't even select that. <laughs> All right, never mind. We're not going to look it up. Gargonian Tome is the only one off the top of my head, and I right. think there's another book, too, that came out, but both were majestic. Mm. Or super rare or higher, I should say. Um, but yeah, so Briar, Briar can run Bracers of Belief. Um, other than that, usually most decks can get more you can either get the same or better value out of other gloves right. without any of the risks so it's not it's not like it's not as bad as cracker jacks where i look at this and i think it's pointless mm -hmm. all right so then on to the chain gloves <laughs> i think you have these in chain right i might i think i think you do because chain's one of the better the better characters to use this chain's actually so good for stubby hammers i think he's probably like the ceiling for it for a number of reasons um stubby hammers actually has the highest upside of all of the gloves i think like i think it actually has the highest upside even more so than mark of lightning i think if you have the four ball lightning chain your mark of lightning still does less than the highest possible outcome of stubby hammers mm -hmm. which is crazy um well, maybe maybe it's about the same in that situation then, because you could. Well, what is the most ludicrous chain combo you could do? I don't know. But what Stubby Hammers does is attack action cards with three or less base power, gain plus one while attacking this turn. So you crack these gloves, and then for the rest of that entire turn, everything you play with base attack three or less gets plus one. This is why chain is the best place for this. Because you have a ton of things like Bounding Demagon mm -hmm. and Riftbind. And what's even better about those is that this checks base. It does not check after modifications. Right. So all of those pump themselves, but they still count for Stubby Hammerers because they have the low base attack. Mm -hmm. So that's why Chain's like one of the best. You can have this crazy chain where you're just like Bounding Demagon, Bounding Demagon, Bounding Demagon, and all of them will be pumped by Stubby Hammerers. Maybe some blue ghostly visits. I don't remember yeah. if I have those in the deck. Uh, I think you have blue, and I think you also may have yellow. And I think all of those work. Mm -hmm. I think it's red that doesn't. Red's right, four, it's right? Four. Yeah. So, yeah. Really good in decks like that. Mm -hmm. um, Briar? Can you... I think this... Actually, I think this was the argument with Briar, is we were arguing between Stubby Hammers and Mark. Right. I think because Briar, Briar has, has, some some has some higher attacks. <laughs> yeah. They, it's less useful. Briar does have like a handful of yellow attacks, but it's one of those things where it's like you. I mean, Mark of Lightning with Ball Lightning back has this huge upside of you could do these crazy amounts of things, and that's generally why it's worth it. But like, if you lose that, Stubby Hammers does start to come more into the argument. You're either Bracers of Belief or this, because 
Well, if you find the right order of cards, you could have this giving plus two, plus three. Something like that, mm -hmm. if you're all on yellow attacks. Um, Briar has the opposite problem of Chain, though, where Briar has high base powers that go down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is bad for that. This does not help with the Ravenous Rabble. So your Rabbles may get down to three, but they still count as base power five or four. Right. <laughs> So, but yeah, this is this is a really good glove. This is one of the best generic gloves. The other one being my favorite gloves because I just play so many decks that use these. Mm -hmm. I love Goliath Gauntlets. Um, Goliath Gauntlet has a lower ceiling than Stubby Hammers because what it just does is your next attack action card that costs two or more gets plus two. This would be good in like a Brute deck. Yep. Or Guardian, yep. Mm -hmm. Dash, or Mechanologist in general. I think, it, think it's in Data Doll even. <laughs> I think it might be. I, th I think it is. Um, uh, Viscerai. Viscerai is good for this because yep. Viscerai is high cost. Um, if you build Chain the Viscerai way, it's going to be... I mean, you could do that. <laughs> I, re I really wonder how that would be. Um, I mean, it's probably slightly worse because Viscerai does make a lot of rune chance and it mm. does help with a lot of his stuff. But you also have a more guaranteed way to put Auras into play because you can always put an Aura into play every single right. turn. But you... Whereas less, this right has to jump through. You'd have less blood deck cards, which means yes. when you do, oh yeah, you're just you're just losing cards. Yeah. You're burning through your deck. Yep. You're lighting your deck on fire. Absolutely, so it, it's <laughs> that is true. You are just taking your deck and throwing it out a window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, Goliath Gauntlets. Lots of decks can use this if you are playing any deck that has honestly any number of two costs or higher and you don't have a better one like viscerai is not going to run this even if you do have like a couple of attacks that can use this which I don't, I don't know if you do actually but like even if you had like a couple your upside on stubby hammers is just better than this mm -hmm. but if you don't have a deck that does well with stubby hammers then like you can just throw goliath gauntlet in here right like it was good in viscerai even before i fixed it and added in all the new everfest cards that cost two or more right that's true even before it was fine because it was like half my deck was one cost or less and the other half was two costs or less but mm -hmm. it's like yeah it's just gonna sit there until i hit one of those two costs and then it'll be amazing right <laughs> and he didn't he wasn't gonna chain together a bunch of low cost ones to make stubby hammers better than that it was always gonna be at most like plus two so it's just better to have the gauntlets that are just easy it's just like oh i found one pop it <laughs> And it's really good with, like, Brute and Guardian when you have, like, Dominate. Mm -hmm. And you can put this on a Dominate attack and be like, all right, <laughs> good luck. Don't worry, it's not swinging for 10 with Dominate. It's now 12. <laughs> I love Goliath Gauntlet. I probably have more foil Goliath Gauntlets than any other gloves at this point because I have it in both of my dash tags. I probably have a foil in all of them. I love Goliath Gauntlet. It's, oh, it's, oh. It's my favorite clubs. I'm definitely biased. <laughs> but it's like, that, that's, it, it looks like a card that's great in Brute and, and uh, Guardian. And then just when you start looking at it, you realize it's actually good in so many other decks. Like, mm -hmm. Dash is not a deck that you think of when you're like, oh yeah, big, huge attacks. But it really, it has a lot. It's like, it's split down the middle. Like, half of it's zero costs, like, zero to six seats and one cost zipper hits. And then the other half is like your throttles and overblasts. Mm -hmm. Um... And actually, that was one of the cool things with Goliath Gauntlet in uh, in um, Dash is that it it doesn't really matter for this per se, but like it's the next attack action card with cost two or greater this turn gains plus two. So I can crack this and then go like zero to sixty, zero to sixty zipper hit overblast, and it will pump the overblast even mm -hmm. though it's like five attacks later right. because it's the next one. It, unlike hardened cross straps, where if you crack that and then play a zero to sixty, you're an idiot. Uh, <laughs> like goliath gauntlet you can crack at the start before your chain begins and as long as you have something that'll use it it'll kick in the second you do so that's one other cool thing with like uh, a chain specific deck where i i do care about building a chain up is that i can always still crack this before the chain goes off yep. <laughs> so yeah goliath gauntlets love it i have the, the art makes no sense i have no idea what this is supposed to be telling because this is like a bunch of skulls here which implies that this is the size of a skyscraper so i don't know who the hell is ever putting this on their hand a but... <laughs> i mean i guess but none of the heroes that use this card could actually put it on their hand you don't know that, that... <laughs> yeah maybe reinar is he actually that big maybe probably not ko he's described as the runt <laughs> <No>. <laughs> maybe adult levia <laughs> 
But yeah, Goliath Gauntlet, love it. And this is why I was talking about like these are the these are the cool cards. This is where we're getting into the the, the cool stuff. Um, and then the boots actually are the like did boots we, are the next level. Did we look at Mark of Lightning? Uh, no, that that's later. That's coming up. Later, yeah, that's okay. because that's not like generic generic. Mm, uh -huh. That's like multi class where there's like yeah. there's two characters who can use it. Unless you count Bravo, star of the show. <laughs> Um, boots are actually probably the most exciting part. Like these, these are these are the most unique in what they do. Like they they all kind of have a similar theme. Well, two of them have a similar theme, I should say. My favorite to start off right off the bat. I love these Mage mm -hmm. Master boots. Um, so the exact opposite of gloves. Um, gloves are completely useless to your wizard deck. Um, mm -hmm. Hopefully, knock on wood here um please lss give us common wizard gloves in the next set you're printing wizard again they're gonna be give elemental me, give me the cut no they're gonna give us a common chess piece that's what's gonna happen that's what's gonna happen they're gonna give us a common chess piece or they're gonna give us a common hat because those are the two slots that we a already have a class mm -hmm. piece in one and then the other we have generic hats that are really good we need gloves because none of the generic gloves do anything in a wizard deck. They'll give none you those them. gloves. They won't be generic, though. Yeah, they'll they'll or or yeah, it. They'll be ice gloves. Yeah, they'll be ice gloves. But yeah, but I'll build Lysander. We know this. We know I'll build it. <laughs> I will follow the gloves. <laughs> but that's the big thing. Is like wizard has no gloves to help it in any way because they're all based around attack actions. Mage Master Boots does almost nothing for any other or like. For any other class, it does very little. Viscerai is the only one who could conceivably use these. Um, but for Wizard, it's fantastic. Because it gives your next non-attack action card, you play this turn, go again. Most non-attack action cards already have go again. Mm -hmm. With the exception of Viscerai, read the runes. That's the only thing that comes to mind that I'm like, this would be good for. Otherwise, Wizard is full of non-attack action cards, and none of them have go again. <laughs> So, Mage Master Boots is the secret to doing more than one thing on a wizard's turn. So, I love Mage Master Boots. I definitely have at least one foil of this from uh, when I foiled out my Cano Blitz deck. I was using this before I bought Storm Striders. <laughs> um, I, I think I was actually thinking about Mage Master Boots for yeah. Data Doll. Okay, okay. Nope, nope, you're right, you're right. You could, you could do that. Mm -hmm. You could do that. And... Oh, we didn't... Do we even discuss that when we built it? I don't remember. I don't think we discussed it, but huh. I I'd thought about it prior to that. How, I, I guess we'd have to look at our items again, because like, some of them do have go again. Specifically, the monocle does. Right. But I think the rest don't. Not that there's many anymore. It really is just the monocle, hyperdriver, and dissipation shield. But yep. I think hyperdriver and dissipation shield don't have go again. So, yeah... Yeah, I, th I think you could do that. and I mean, Achilles Accelerator is not amazing. It's pretty mediocre in a in a, in a deck. Although, so. that is, a, is that at the beginning of the turn, or is that... For what? Like, um, when you banish something from her ability. Oh, for, for the Achilles Accelerator? Or, oh, oh, for Data Doll. Yes. Data Doll is if you banish an item, it goes into play for free. Anytime. Okay, that's, that's oh, her sorry. ability. A Mechanologist item. Yes. <laughs> it's banished. Yes. It goes into play for free. Yep. Whereas Dash starts with an item out already. Yeah, um, yeah no, I definitely think... So Dash isn't going to take this. Dash no. Dash would much rather have the other boot because Dash is setting up a chain and like Achilles Accelerator does virtually nothing when you're going to have go again on all of your attacks anyways. Mm -hmm. But in Dash, there has been multiple times in which I've overblasted you, cracked my boots, and then shot you with a pistol. Whereas Data Doll is going to probably care about that slightly less because it's basically just payload, payload, and then shoot you with a pistol. Right. Uh, which is still there, but like... Data Doll does have a lot of items in the deck. Dash has three. Data Doll would have six. Has double that. And being able to give them go again. Yeah, I, I can see that. I can see it. I think Data Doll could consider this. I, I think that is a, a real include. And then Kano. Kano loves it. Amazing Kano. And presumably in Lysander too, except... They, oh, right. That's what it is. They're going to print common boots. 
we already have an amazing common boot that's generic and all that. They're going to print a wizard boot. Right. It's going to be like, you have to decide between the two. And they're still going to be like, Kano is the most I've ever put Ironhide into into my starting <laughs> equipment because his gloves do nothing. So it's literally just Ironhide or Null Rune. It's like, okay, are you doing physical damage or arcane damage? That's the gloves that goes in. So I I really want common gloves. I, I want it so much because it's the worst thing for commoner when building a wizard is you're like, gloves are actually empty. You will get your wish. Yeah. Just not the way you want it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah probably. It's going to be the same thing as like the, the chess piece mm -hmm. where it's a, a non-go-again action that just gives you resources that you then can't use. You want a wizard, they gave you a wizard. Yeah, yeah true. Uh, so use it. All right, and then we have Runaways, which is much more generic. This I, I we could have discussed this at the same time as like uh, Null Rune and Ironhide and all that stuff. Um, this is better than Iron Rot Boots, essentially, because it's basically the same as having Iron Rot or having Blade Break one and Spell Spell Void one. All right, because it's it's nondescript. Yeah. Right? yeah, it just blocks the next one damage that would be dealt to you. So. It can do the equivalent of Blade Break 1. It can do the equivalent of Spell Void 1. And it can block non-specified damage. Mm -hmm. It is the only card that can do that. And we do have it. Which is great if you're playing against Briar and they're about to mark of Lightning you. Although you're still only going to block one of it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yep. But that one could matter. Basically, if you're going to have a defensive boot option, Runaways is always something you can consider. It's also kind of nice and like against Runeblade because it's going to block something. So it's like, do I need to block Arcane? It can block the one Arcane. Do mm -hmm. I need to block Physical this turn? It can block the one Physical, but it doesn't block for a lot, so it kind of doesn't get put in a lot. But there are a couple of times where it's like, it makes a gut. Like I said, Old Him does. <laughs> right. But it's not that amazing. Uh, time Skippers. Uh, I hated this card for the longest time. I found several decks that can use it now, though. Um, you you only to. dislike it because there's someone else who uh, totes it. It's... Oh, are you talking about that one Prism deck where they put it in? Or, like... Uh, we're we're talking about someone we specifically know. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Um, I So I, I have come up on the card, though. Originally, I thought it was bad, because mm -hmm. spending three to gain two action points is like, there's almost nothing you can follow that up with at this point now. Like, it's really bad in something like Rune Blades or anything that's not going to have a lot of resources, this is going to be bad in. Now, I do run it in Prism, and Prism doesn't have a lot of blue. But um, I have seen some people put it in Prism decks where almost all of your attacks cost three, and that I consider to be much more questionable because you're going to because a lot of those attacks are like reds and yellows and you're going to be spending two cards to even crack the time skippers and then more to pay for the attack you're really not going to have anything to follow that up with um but if you are playing a more balanced prism where you do have like a a, a bit of blues here and there too and your attacks are going to be like one to two cost this is going to be a lot more doable um, and then an old him is great. That's the big one that I put it in. It's and, and I say old him, any guardian. If you if you build Bravo, you probably would put time skippers in because most guardian decks are a bunch of blue cards. Right. <laughs> and so you can usually crack this. And while your attacks are very expensive, you can usually pay for two. <laughs> and this, which mm -hmm. is wild, um, especially when you probably have some chess piece that helps with it as well. Um, like I have hardened cross straps. Right. Um, that is one of the ones where you would not necessarily want Deep Blue because you're going to have to pitch something to crack Time Skippers and you're going to have to... Do, it's Yeah, it gets expensive and you start burning through a lot of cards. Mm -hmm. And so having some like Hardened Cross Wraps that can reduce the cost while not costing you any cards to do that, it's just a free cost reduction, those can be nice in that. But yeah, that's basically where Time Skipper is good. Okay. Resource-heavy decks that have all the ways to pay for it. <laughs> it makes sense and then this is probably uh i would hazard a guess at one of your favorite boots yeah um, <laughs> it used to be one of my favorite too and then i started playing a lot of decks that run two costs or higher because <laughs> this wasn't my viscerai deck and i replaced it yeah, um this goes in chain or yep. katsu yep 
Oh, that's true. We both we we have it in Katsu and Ira too. Even mm-hmm. though they have very few uses for it, it's just like it's there when it happens. Yeah. Um, and they don't have better options. So, yeah, Snapdragon Scalers. Give a target attack action card with cost one or less. Go again. Doesn't work well into Warriors. Um, and Warriors have better anyways. Um, because they basically have this, but for weapons. <laughs> and it blocks. <laughs> it's it's one of those things where it's like say for chain it's when you want to go yep. do that big turn and even yep. with all that extra go again you still need more yep 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 and in in decks like that it's actually one of your best equipment pieces it's like actually you can't replace it mm. <laughs> this is one of those ones where it's like there are certain decks where this is your best piece of equipment <laughs> you're like your class equipment goes before snapdragons I'm pretty sure, like, and that's not just Ranger Two. We have this, I think, right? Like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sap Dragon's one of the ones that can make the jump. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, cause I, yeah, wasn't that true? Wasn't like competitive classic constructed chain running Snap Dragon? I think so. Yeah, because I, for, I forget what their their higher rarity boots are, but it's not great. And Visor has only replaced this because he has like the the Sutcliffe Swede shoes, which mm-hmm. are worse than this into this kind of deck. But also has the upside of being able to support the other cards in this res deck, so that's right. why. That's why. But this is just free. Give something go again. Sick. <laughs> and that's the uh, that's the generic head to head to boot. So I guess now we just quickly go through uh, some of the multi class things where right. they can be used in more than one class, but not in everybody. And we've talked about it a lot. We'll start with Mark of Lightning. Um. So this can go into Lexi. Yep. This can go into Briar. Yeah. And basically what it just says is whenever a lightning or elemental attack you control is defended by a card from hand, you can destroy it to deal one non-specified damage to the defending hero. This is really, really good when you have ball lightning. Because ball lightning boosts the damage that your attacks do, your elemental attacks do, or and lightning ones. And this deals damage from the attack. Because it makes the attack deal the damage, not this item, mm-hmm. which means that ball lightning buffs it. So this has an upside of if you go ball lightning, ball lightning, ball lightning, ball lightning, and then crack the mark of lightning on the last ball lightning, it will deal five damage, which is the highest ceiling of all of the cards we've discussed. I think maybe chain can equal that. Maybe I don't know that you have enough sources of go again to do that. And ball lightning but it's is not banned in commoner. No. Yet. No. So yes, you can use it with Mark of Lightning. Mm-hmm. And like you may have if you have a game where you never draw ball lightning, uh not thinking of any particular examples of uh a game in which someone may have been playing Briar and never found their ball lightning, mm-hmm. it can still deal one damage, and that is your your essentially cracker jacks at that point, and you never want to be cracker jacks. But the upside is so much higher that it's just worth it. Uh, and you probably would play this in Lightning Lexi, too, because if you're going to play Lightning Lexi, you're going to play the ball Lightning. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to play the ball Lightning. But uh, I think we've more built Lexi towards the... Frost. Frost tempo yep. deck yep. style. I only mention it because I see it in the sidebar here, and you yeah. definitely could build it, and I don't think it's the best version of Lexi you can have, and I think you're always going to end up as like just kind of a worse Briar deck, but yeah. like there are some neat things in Lightning Lexi, like Buzzbolt and all that, that if you mm. go that route, you would definitely run these gloves and the ball lightnings. You're just probably not the best version of Lexi, but we'd have to try it to see yeah, for I'm sure. sure. I'm sure there's a way we could uh, put it together where yeah. it is actually good. Yeah. Or at least decent. Yeah. And, and that's what I'm thinking. Like, I don't think it would be bad. I don't think Lightning Lexi would be bad. If you just built, like, an actual normal Ranger deck, like, you're not even trying to build Briar and Lexi. You're right. just build a ranger deck with buzz bolts and stuff like that i think it would be good i just don't think it would be as good um but we'd have to really try it and again you definitely would run the mark of lightning in that well maybe maybe i for i forgot the bra- the ranger bracers do put something in your arsenal you could put mark so. of lightning in the frost because of the elemental that is actually true you just don't get the upside because without ball lightning there's no way to boost this damage right so well there is there Actually, you could also put it in Earth Briar as well, because isn't there an no. Earth? It's lightning equipment. Oh, oh, in Earth Briar? Yes. Yes. Okay, I thought you were going to say Earth Old Him or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good. But yeah, yeah. Not yeah. that stupid. Yeah, you could put sometimes. it in Earth Briar. Um, there might be. I can't remember if there's a boost or not. There, There is one that's slightly there's things worse that than Ball Lightning, but... 
Oh yeah. Yeah. What were we looking at? I don't. Here's remember. the problem though. Was that a rare? That might have been a rare. Been, so you know, scratch it. Yeah, but it definitely it's super busted in in, in like normal Briar, um, which is super busted. So. Yeah. Uh, Coat of Frost. I love this one. This one is good too. This is not. It doesn't do as crazy things as the other thing stuff, as the other one does, as Mark Lightning does. But it's a free frostbite token. Yep, and I love it. I love it so much. You probably not so much uh, since you've had to play against me I mean, on a Coat of Frost deck a number of times. Maybe I'm playing Isolexi. <laughs> it's it's just such a nice way because like chess piece is usually pretty easy to swap out. At least, it, it's definitely easy in, in, like, a Lexi deck to swap it out because Ranger doesn't care too much because all of their stuff's pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. um, but Old Him, on the other hand, it's a little more expensive because he does care about the, the like, cheapening cost, but it's so good against aggro decks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, it's just it, it's a nice sideboard card you, you're never putting this in as like this is the primary game plan this is like auto first slot but like it's a great sideboard item for when you're like okay this is the matchup where i have to be slower than them or they're they're always going to be faster than me so i need to slow them down so and that's what it's really good in old or you just too. feel like being an asshole and... yeah that's true <laughs> and then we get to the saddest one bloom of evergrowth yep the earth equipment and it's an instant. You pay three, which is already ludicrous. Mm. Um, and you destroy it to return target Earth Attack action or Earth Action card or Earth Instinct card from your graveyard to your hand. So right off the bat, it's Earth. So the only people who can play this is Old Him and Briar. Yep. Briar has Crown of Dictomy, which does all of this, but cheaper. The only difference is it's an action that doesn't have Go again versus an instant. Right. But it costs one. And it just... It, it And it doesn't only fetch Earth. And for, like, this can fetch... Actually, I think I think that can fetch action... Like, attack action cards, too, can it? Well, isn't it... I can't it, remember. Isn't it uh, only... Runeblade? Uh, it's only Runeblade, but, like... The things you'd be fetching are already Runeblade. Uh, okay, so it's only not attack... Oh, wait, no, no, that's what it does. Right, that's why it's better. It gives you a Rune Blade attack and a Rune Blade non attack. Right. Gets two things for, for a third of the price. It's two things you need. Too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it puts them on the top of your deck, whereas this puts in your hand, but you just spent three to do it. So, like, can you use the things that are in your hand? You only got one thing. So, this, just, this is just better for Briar um, right off the bat. <laughs> And then for old him, um, guardians have, from what I remember, one of the most busted helms in all of Commoner. <laughs> um, yeah, you can increase your intellect and draw more cards for turn. And uh -huh. I just don't see a world in which I would ever want to replace this card with Plume of Evergrowth when this blocks for one with Bad Worn, so it doesn't break itself when it does that. And then for one, the low, low cost of one, you can draw five cards on your next draw. Mm -hmm. So it's just, Plume is worse than all of the options that those two characters have. And that is why it's tragic. Because it's not even that bad. It's just that it's it was power crept before it existed. <laughs> this is this is a welcome to wrath card. <laughs> right. Maybe, maybe you would use it in a only Earth prior maybe you, maybe yeah. if 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 you have a lot of ways to pay for it and still do stuff afterwards mm -hmm. and what you would value being able to put an earth card into your hand and then play it that is about the only window in which it would be better and that's still it's so hard to out cost getting two cards back yeah. from your graveyard and yeah they're not going into your hand but they'll be in your next one <laughs> but yeah that's that's plume now we get to the to the much better uh, multi class stuff because these are just fantastic. I I love these hats and I wish we could use them on more heroes. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> um, first one off, the one that both of us have used the least um, because no one's built Bolton yet, and nope. I have Prism, and that's the only one who uses this. But Halo of Illumination 
if you're playing a light hero, you are playing this card. This is just, it's so good because it does everything light heroes care about. It puts something in your soul. It is worse for Bolton, ironically. Um, the way Bolton works is just very sad, very bad. This doesn't count as charging his soul. Really? No. Hmm. It has to actually say charge. Ah. Uh. For it that's, to charge the soul. That's silly. So this gives him things that he can use for his benefit, but it doesn't count as charging his soul. So it doesn't actually turn on his ability. Mm. It does, It does. like, Prism doesn't care about charging. Prism just turns things in her soul into spell shields. So, or spectral shields. So Prism's fine with this. Mm. It's, it's good for her, although her ability is so expensive, it's hard to do it anyways, or you don't do it often anyways. But, but... Well, maybe you use it for spell void yeah. instead. Yep, it, th too. that's exactly the point. It's like everything about it is good. Maybe this is just one for a redraw. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you pitch something for three, you draw a new card, and you still have two left over for an attack. Like, yeah, it's just it's so good. I, it ha does have to be a light card to draw a card, but like if you're playing Prism, you know, like half your deck is light or more. Like the light attacks are so good, you're going to have a bunch of them. And Bolton probably the same thing. And and so even though it doesn't count as charging, Bolton would still probably use this just to draw the card. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it does have the upside it has Spell Void. So if you happen to run into a matchup where you're against someone who has arcane damage and they're not going to put out Bruh. a ton of it. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Like, it's actually decent into Runeblade, for example, because even though it's only going to stop arcane damage once, right. against a non viscerai Runeblade, that might be enough. It's just like stop one Rosetta Thorn trigger, and that might be all the difference between winning and losing. Where you are going to want to swap this out for Arcane Barriers, Wizard. Because right. Wizard's going to be constantly putting out a ton of Arcane damage, and this is just not going to make the cut. Nope. Um, and then maybe against Viscerai, because this is going to block two from a single rune chant. And you're like, well, that felt bad. <laughs> Whereas Arcane Barrier will do more. But in general, like the, the classes that use this, Bolton and Prism, neither one of them have class headgear in, in Commoner. Um, Prism does outside of Commoner. Uh, maybe Bolton too, I don't know. But in Commoner, neither of them have class headgear. So mm -hmm. this is just like, well, are you going to take Hope Merchant's Hood that kind of lets you sculpt your hand? Or this that draws you a card? Yep. <laughs> like, it, you're just going to take this. You're just going to take this. It's, it's better. Um, and very similar vein, Ebonfold. Except yep. Ebonfold is better than Halo. Mm. Um, what does Ebonfold do? As the biggest user of Ebonfold here. So... <laughs> It's instant speed. You just pay one, destroy it, and uh, you banish a card. Yep. And if it's a shadow card, you draw a card. Yep. Yep. And then it also has the spell void, too. Right. So everything we said about the halo still applies here. Exactly. The difference is, I mentioned how with Prism, you don't really care about having things to remove for Spectral Shields because it's expensive, hard to do it. You have so many other things that put things into your soul that you usually already have more than you're using for Spectral Shields. And with Bolt, it doesn't count as charging for some god be knows reason, so mm -hmm. it doesn't actually turn him on in any way. This does big things for both Chain and Levia. Mm -hmm. For Chain, this is disgusting. You could just pay one and banish your... Bounding Demagon, oh no, you lost a card, quote-unquote. Mm -hmm. Then you draw a new card, and you can still play the card you lost. <laughs> and so that's just disgusting. And then for Levia, Levia activates her ability when something with six or more power gets banished. Right, so you just This turns off her blood debt. Yeah. You can't play the card you lost, but it did just turn off your blood debt, so you didn't kill yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. It's like Halo. It's just the heroes benefit from it way better with exactly. Ebonfold. Exactly. So Halo is the is easier to sideboard out than Ebonfold. Whereas like Ebonfold, there are definitely times where like you might go up, up against a wizard and still keep Ebonfold in. You may not, but you but you'd have more reason to. <laughs> Be like, well the upside is so good. Like you can have that crazy chain turn where you essentially have four cards in hand, one in arsenal, and you just banished a card that you still get to use mm -hmm. and you have all the options. <laughs> so yeah, Ebonfold is it is fantastic. It's, it's fun. Also cool looking. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is one of the coolest looking helmets in the game. <laughs> that would be one to, to get a, a cold foil of. Hopefully it's Probably. good cold foil. It's it, Yeah, that's true. Get it and it's like just this. Yep. <laughs> and the top. Mm. Oh. But yeah, those are the big shadow and light helmets. And then finally, we have discussed this in a previous episode, but... Rare equipment is allowed in. There are some generic rare equipments. One of which 
we'll talk about this right off the bat. Spell fray. So we can only ever have two pieces of spell fray. We can't have more than that because it's a rare. Uh, and it's spell void one, which is just bad. Yep. It's just bad. If it's... it was spell void two, maybe this would actually be maybe. An yep. Okay, card, but it's actually just the worst rare <laughs> that's ever been printed. You're actually so right on that too. If it was spell void two, you actually would probably bring this into some things. Like, like think about Briar for example. Briar mm -hmm. doesn't use any rare slots in her sideboard normally because, like, what are you going to do? Reaping blade? No. Mm -hmm. So, like, she doesn't use any of her rare slots. And in a deck like that, you probably could consider Spell Fray with Spell Void 2 because you're like, all right, this will slow down the wizard just enough that I'm going to kill them first because mm -hmm. you're an aggro deck. So that's that's actually, if it was Spell Void 2, it'd be great for slowing down, like going against a wizard deck when you are the aggro deck. Yeah. Well, again, LSS, we're, we're fixing so many of your bad cards here. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, that just makes a really bad card. And it's a rare. Why is this spell void one? I don't it's know. It's a rare. It makes no sense. Like, I'm, I'm trying to think. I'm like, oh, but they're thinking spell void two would just be too strong for this. But I'm like, but they put it on the common helmets. Why wouldn't they do it for the rare equipment? <laughs> it's, it's so rare. Why is this spell void one? Oh, yeah. Spell fray. Terrible. Absolutely garbage. Um... And then Arcane Lantern, this is actually the one good rare generic equipment. Right. We talked about it in the last episode. Because it's an offhand. Yep. You can use it, I guess, technically. You you can use it in any class. But I guess well, you'd use it more in... You wouldn't use it in Reaping Blade. <laughs> you could. Yeah, I mean, you could. That's true. You could you if could. you don't want to have a weapon. And Reaping Blade yeah. very much cares about its weapon. <laughs> yeah, you'd hit him with a lantern. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you'd use this in, I guess, old him. Old him, one hundred percent. I still think uh, ninja. I think ninja is actually really good for this okay. because yep. your your weapons aren't that important in ninja. They're That's just like true. a little extra chip damage. But like one kadachi is still fine. I mean, like two kadachis is better than one, but it's not a it's not a huge difference. You could put this, in and they're not using the rare slots, right? You could put this in merchant. Because why would you use Benji's needles? <laughs> why would you use his needles? You could use it in merchant, but the merchant weapon is a two-handed sword. Yeah, but you. So who's gonna use that anyway? I mean, well, you know, you're not wrong. <laughs> you're actually not wrong. <laughs> like, like I, I was immediately stepping up to be like, yeah, but then you'd lose your weapon. Now I'm realizing yeah, you're, you're still gonna lose it. <laughs> but you, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you're like, well, that's your two rare slots right there. Is the weapon and the the lantern and. You know, that honestly might be fine. <laughs> that might be fine to do that. And just, yeah. You just, just, no, I'm not going to swing my weapon anyways. Here's mm -hmm. a lantern. So, yeah, I mean, you could do that. Um, we did discuss the possibility of Brute. If you have, like, a Mandible Claw, uh, Arcane Lantern sideboard plan where you just do the one Mandible Claw. Yep. Or you could also do um, any of the Warrior one-handed weapons. Yep. I yep. don't know why you would, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, like, I can still see it, like, yeah. except the problem is, like, all the warriors, aside from Bolton, would get worse by not having a second weapon. I know, that's, that's yeah. what I mean. Because, like, they're they're so built around doing more than one weapon attack. Um, Kasai, literally, your ability is useless if you're not going to have a second weapon. Um, <laughs> uh, Bolton is probably the most, like, he, he could do it, because he, he doesn't... Because you can build Bolton where it's just, like, light attacks. And it's not actually that focused right. around the weapon. That's true. So for him, he could actually he could put the lantern in, and he probably is still using the axes, even though the swords are a lot better, just in general. Like I actually think the centauri sabers might be the best way to build every single warrior, <laughs> um, just because it's synergized. Like it, it, it's actually not even because the sabers are broken. That's the funny thing. It's that Everfest is broken. The mm. Everfest cards are so broken that. It has made Centauri Sabers the best weapon type because once you go to Sabers, you can start bringing in the Blade Runners and all the other one handed things and all that. Like, Blade Runner legitimately, I think, has to be a sword attack. So, and or, a one handed one. Or don't so, forget, yeah, there's copper. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, yeah. And what does copper do? Nothing. It draws after you've got, four. like, yes. 
But yeah, so the Lantern is actually good in a number of decks. You can throw this in a Bolton deck. You can, you definitely throw this in a Guardian deck because Guardian's probably using a Nothos anyways. And then this is just you either take the shield or you take the Lantern. Um, and then you could put it in Brute potentially if you have like that sideboard plan where it's just Manable Claw Barrier um, or Lantern. Um, and Ninja, Ninja can definitely waste a slot on this and yep. be fine. And generally speaking, it probably is better for Ninja to lose a Kadachi for a Lantern rather than lose one of their equipment for Arcane I Barrier. See it. Yeah. Aside from, like... Because otherwise, it's, like, probably the the boots is the next best. Maybe the hat? But, like, the hat seems so good in Ninja after. Uh, I think, and, and I actually do think, um, jokes aside, like, yes, you probably should have blocked the Ira Specialization card in that attack, so I didn't draw more cards. But, like... The Hope Merchant's Hood is actually really good in Ninja, just in general, because it's so combo focused and right. having specific orders of cards that like being able to redraw cards is actually just super good in that deck. That's probably the best Hope Merchant's is, is in Ninja. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think there's an argument for just losing a Kadachi instead. But, yeah. So, yeah, Arcane Lantern. Uh, again, I, I always have to laugh about this one because... You brought it up in like episode eight or nine, and I laughed you out of the room about it and how bad it was. And then suddenly the new commoner format comes out, and it's instantly one of the best pieces of equipment available. <laughs> Though a lot of classes are actually like, we will play this. Yep. <laughs> it's just so funny. It's so funny. After all the crap I gave it, it's actually really, really good. Because <laughs> your mind is not as open as mine. <laughs> I'm thinking 10 steps ahead. Well, you're still behind. The joke was, I had talked about how sad it would be if I had pulled a cold foil lantern out of that box, and it actually would have been good. Probably <laughs> it would have been good. I would have been so happy about it now. I would have been like, this is awesome. It's going into old him. One more cold foil for the old him deck. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. There we go. And that's our look at kind of all the generic or multi-class equipment. Uh, we did kind of touch on a couple of, like, normal equipment things mm. that we mentioned i think the wizard chess piece we talked about crown of crown of uh dictomy compared bit. to some things but basically just looking at the ones where like multiple characters are going to be considering these equipment yep because your sideboard is kind of a big a big part of building the deck and ironically what i really love about them adding rares in is that it does make the sideboard actually a lot more important than it was before. Like when we started building commoner decks, the sideboard was kind of a joke because you ended up just having things where you're throwing in all these null rune stuff that like, don't even like, you're never going to bring it in. You're never going to sideboard it in. Yeah. Like, like I think I have some decks in which there is a class piece of equipment with arcane barrier and a null rune in the sideboard because it just didn't matter. Like it just right. did not matter. <laughs> Whereas now with rares added in, suddenly there are more options, the sideboard gets better, and it's less of a joke. So that's really sweet, and now this is a good way to look at it and figure I, out how you're sideboarding. I still miss the six rares, but... Yeah, yeah, that is that is true. Although Chain is probably better better now with Seeds well, over Howl from Beyond. But I mean, if, if it was both. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it definitely it definitely hurts some some of the class like data data doll that data doll is broken. Um, I don't know about Levy. I feel like Levy could be fine. I I feel like if we just we go back and I think it's just rework howls it. from the bellows of hell, right? Our convulsions, convulsions. So um, we just have to replace it. Yeah, mixing two cards together. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, convulsions. So we just have to replace that with like another pump spell and uh, then some other attacks we can just replace with other big attacks. Oh, and the specialization. we got to get yeah, that out of just, there. Yep. Another big attack, I guess. Yep. But, yep, that was episode 11. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment below, tell us what equipment you think we're uh, gravely overestimating or underrating, and uh, subscribe for more commoner content. Mm-hmm.